people are starting to gather because uh, the state budget was just passed. And though it's unclear exactly what's in it, what is clear is that it is not good news for people that rely on public services, human services, like many of us do. People come in in the morning and uh, get us out of bed, come in at night and help us get back into bed. And they're paid by the state home services program. And uh, the state has proposed cuts in that program. Whether or not they will actually appear in this budget or not, since it's all such a crazy story, who knows? But we're not taking any chances. We're here to say that that uh, you will not cut us. You will not reduce our hours. You will not drop people from the program. You will not limit eligibility. This is a program that, that serves everybody well. It's uh, one that not only we rely on, that's a matter of life or death for us, but it saves the state a lot of money. It makes no sense to do anything other than to keep it strong and viable. And we sent statements to all three of the major candidates, Democrat, Republican, and Green Party. We told them that if at such time they want to sign these statements, which we will read later at the rally, we'll be glad to give them a form in front of people with disabilities to say that they signed it. We did hear from Rich Whitney, the candidate running for governor of the Greens. He did sign it, and he sent a representative to uh, talk about that today. We're still waiting to hear from the other two. At such point, if they were willing to sign it, we'll be glad to give them a forum also. Stop the cuts! Stop the cuts! My mother, she receives home care from Ada's Healthcare through the Department of Aging, and it would hurt my mother if she would lose the service. So we need services for seniors as well as people with disabilities. So I'm hoping by us being here and gathered, by me being part of this, that we hope to come up with a responsible budget that balances everything and includes us and don't exclude us. That's what I'm hoping we get out of this rally today. All right, let's gather around, everybody. Let's gather around. And we thought it was very, very, very essential that everybody gather here today. Because just within the last few hours, about the last day or so, a budget was passed in the state of Illinois. And that we don't know a whole lot about what will actually happen because you never know with these people. But we do know that it's probably not very good news for people with disabilities. We are all here because we care very deeply about a certain program. It's called the Home Services Program. It's a program that many of us use every day. It's the key to our independence. We get in and out of bed every day only because the Home Services Program provides us with the help we need and is paid for by all of our tax dollars. And it's a great program. But that program, along with many others, faces a terrible threat because these politicians in Springfield, could they have done a more chicken shit job of handling this whole thing? I mean, really, they did not, they would not provide any new revenues, and they would not do anything other than pass a terrible budget and then hand it over to the governor and say, good luck, you do what you want, we're all going home for the holidays. Because they have handled that in a more chicken shit way. No. Uh... And we're here to tell them that whatever happens, you will not cut us. And today, we're taking action, we're going to have this rally, and then we're going to have a march to show that we're going to take action. And if anything does happen, we'll take it again. And if anything happens, we'll take it again. Right and if anything else happens, we'll do it again. And we will keep doing it, because right. this is not discretionary. This is a vital program. This for us is a matter of life or death. Right. That's right. That's right. The only way that these politicians can get away with this is if we go quietly, if we don't tell anybody what they're trying to do, if we just quietly go away and say, oh, well, then they can get away with it. 
But when we start telling the world what's going on, that's when they get nervous. That's when people see how bankrupt their decisions are. And that's what makes them nervous. And that's why we're here, because we won't go quietly. Stop the cuss! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop the cuss! Yeah. Stop the cuss! Yeah. Stop the cuss! Stop the cuss! Uh, first, we're going to have some speakers. The first one will be Jennifer Thomas. She's back. She spends many, 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 many hours a week dealing with people like us who need support in their homes, making sure that that support is there, fighting the strong fight to keep our program strong. The Home Services Program is designed to save the state a lot of money, right? Yeah. And give us control over the people that get us up and out of bed every day, right? Yeah. And right now, you don't have to be Medicaid eligible to receive home services. So that means we don't have to make a choice as to whether or not we will go to work or we will stay poor and housebound because we get home services. Well, some of the proposed changes include that they want to make new eligibility requirements. That means that anybody will be grandfathered in the program who qualified before they make this change, but starting in FY11, if you haven't already applied for home services, you have to meet Medicaid eligibility. That means you have to have $2,000 in assets, and that's it. That's not fair. No, it's not fair. Taxpayers and people who work have the right to get up and go to work. Yeah. Or school, for that matter. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Additionally, you want to know what else the state has decided to do? They've, they've put caps on certain activities of daily living. Like 30 hours a month of meal prep? People, that's less than an hour a day. What about nutritious, well-balanced meals? 18 hours a month outside the home? That's like less than half hour a day when you think about the weather in Chicago. Um, because it takes us that much longer to get on a bus when it's snowing. 12 hours a month for laundry, 17 hours a month for homemaking, and only three hours a month for money management because they assume that we all do it electronically. Not everybody has access to a computer. And that's it. That's correct. You don't have to be disabled not to have access to a computer. But that was their reasoning behind it. These service caps take away our control. And lastly, the state feels like they're going to save $200 million over a three-year, a, a five-year period with a managed care program, which will allow us not to choose our own doctors. It will also impact housing options and the long-term care of people with disabilities. They want to put an insurance company in charge of our lives. We have fought for a long time to end oppression, and it seems like they're going backwards in this state. We have to tell them that enough is enough, and we're not going to take it anymore. Enough is enough! 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 All right, so now you know from what Jennifer said exactly what's going on, exactly what we fear. And we can't let that happen. We won't go quietly. We will not let any of that happen. And that's why we sent this statement, this pledge, to all the candidates. It said, as governor of, of Illinois, I will make the provision of hope and community-based assistance services for people with disabilities a top priority. I will ensure that the Hope Services Program of the Illinois Department of Human Services is abundantly funded so that every Illinoisan who needs home services to live independently in their home can receive the assistance they need. I will not reduce and in fact will increase 
Asset limits for home services customers from current levels so as not to keep them trapped in deep poverty. No one should be punished for desiring to work and earn money. I will not impose reductions in service hours through parameters or any other means. I will insert, ensure that personal assistants receive living wages and annual cost of living increases. I believe Illinoisans with disabilities deserve to decide for themselves which personal assistants and medical professionals such as doctors will serve them. Therefore, I will discontinue the Medicaid Managed Care Pilot Program. This is the statement that we sent to all the candidates. It makes it very clear what we expect from our next governor. Now we're going to have a few more speakers, and then we're going to have a march. Our next speaker, a lot of times when we do these uh, actions, what makes them a success is all the little details, someone taking care of that. And Rachel Seiler did that for this action. And she did it because home services means a lot to her personally. And she's here to tell you about it. Rachel. Um, because of home services, I was able to move here on my own and attend school. Um, because of that, I do have um, a, green, a degree now. Right. If, budget cuts, if budget cuts are put into place, I am afraid that everyone who uses these services will have to go back in time um, and be thrown into institutions. As an evolving movement, we are not supposed to move backwards in life. We are supposed to progress and continue to grow and conquer. If we, cut, if we let the cuts go into place, um, home services program will not be available for us to be as independent as possible. We will lose everything that we have fought for in becoming the amazing and strong people we are today. And thanks to you guys for showing up and continue to chant and fight so we can continue to, to free our people from institutions. Our next, speak, our next speaker is a great and mighty adapter. Larry Biondi is next. Larry Biondi. Yes. <laughs> Home 
care is the best thing that's ever happened to my family. And because the state, $13 billion budget crisis, vital home care services for people with disabilities are in serious jeopardy. Cuts, yes, cuts to home care would devastate my family and more than 30, listen to me, 30,000 people with disabilities across the state, like my brother. Yes. And putting my brother in a nursing home would diminish his quality of life. Yes. It would diminish all of our quality yes. of life. Yes. 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 Fight for it, fight for it, fight for it. It's not only home care hours that people with disabilities are worried about. A Medicaid, a Medicaid managed care program in Chicago area would make it harder for thousands of people with disabilities to access the services and the equipments that they need to live independently and with dignity. My brother, you can say boo. Boo! You can say boo. boo! Right? Boo! My brother and thousands of people with disabilities throughout Illinois have fought long and hard for consumer direct care that enables them to live in their homes, in their communities, and have control over their lives. If the state turns the care for people with disabilities into the hands of the managed care companies, I'm afraid people with disabilities will be viewed only as numbers and potential profits. That's right. And you are right. You are right. And you are right. For, more, for me and thousands of other home care workers and consumers, that is unacceptable. That's it right. is unacceptable to cut home care services for people with disabilities and turn their lives over to managed care. I thank you and God bless you. And we have one more speaker. And this is not a partisan gathering. We did not come here to endorse any party or any candidate. We did not come here to, to advance anything other than the justice that we believe in, which is why we gave every candidate the opportunity to sign the pledge. And if any of the others want to do it, we will gather again and give them a chance to address us and let us know. But one candidate did. Richard Whitney of the Green Party signed the pledge. And he sent a representative, Scott Summers, who is running for state treasurer on the Green Party. And he came here to address us on behalf of Mr. Whitney and the Greens. There he is, Scott Summers. Yeah. Yeah. Two little words, decency and dignity. Dignity and decency. Is that too much to ask the state of Illinois? There are people upstairs in that building right now who have their doors closed. They don't want to hear from us. They don't want to hear what we have to say. They would rather, as Mike said earlier, that we just go away. We'll have none of that. We insist on dignity and decency. That's why I'm running as a member of the Green Party, ladies and gentlemen. Our politics in Illinois have failed us. Yes, it has. We have a financial crisis here today, but guess what? It's a manufactured crisis. The people in that building have created the crisis. It's a phony crisis. That's right. They are trying to take away dignity. They are trying to take away decency. This is politics, folks. We have a right to decency and dignity in our lives. But if we don't assert ourselves, they won't let us have it. I hope you'll give us a look. The Illinois Green Party, our website is ilgp.org. We are on the ballot in November, and we will work with you Decency and dignity for everybody in Illinois.
These are, these are all the speakers that we're going to have today, but we ask you now, if you would please join us, lining up behind Larry Biondi over there on the corner so that we can have a little march and action. You ready? the budget cuts. They're trying to cut our home services program, which is the lifeline of people with disabilities to live in the community. So right now we're doing civil disobedience at Randolph and Clark. We're cutting off the traffic to send a message to Governor Quinn that we do not want our services cut, that he will not solve the budget crisis on people with disabilities back. Um, today, um, the power of ADAPT was felt here at the State of Illinois building in downtown Chicago. Um, we came and we had a rally, and after the rally, we engaged in some civil disobedience by blocking off um, the corner of Clark and Randolph for about two hours, I think, at least. Um, we were asked to disperse two or three times, and then, I don't know how many, but about ten of us, perhaps, were arrested afterwards. Um, our message was for the gubernatorial candidates to please sign a pledge that they would protect home services and also end the managed care pilot. Um, one candidate, the Green Party candidate, has signed. The governor and Senator Brady have not. And we did not hear from the governor or his office today. Um, so we stayed until as long as we could, which was until we were arrested. Hello, my name is Horacio Sparza, and I'm here to invite you to listen to our radio show, Independent Living, every Saturday from 9 a.m. to 10 in English and from 10 to noon in Spanish. Please tune WNTD 950 a.m. Remember, every Saturday, 9 a.m. to 10 in English, 10 to noon in Spanish. We present stories, we interview leaders, legislators, and much, much more. Hello, my name is Gloria Nichols, and I'm co-founder, along with Will Cowling and Rob Rotman, of Adapter Chicago Productions. And we are, as of June 1st, we will be uh, 11 years old. And we would like to thank, in a very big way, uh, Cos the Sea Foundation for paying for our closed captioning. Uh, so here we go. One, two, three. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Closed captioning made possible by support from the Costa Sea Foundation.